What to Frank Zappa? Davis. Have in common. Well, they both use the beautiful sound of quartal harmony. In this video, I'm going to give you some quartal harmony voicings over a funk groove to give you a really nice open modern sound that can help bridge the gap between funk, jazz, and fusion. All the links to tab and backing track can be found down below. My name's Steve Orsworth, let's dive in. Now tertiary harmony is the standard Western musical system where chords are built by using intervals of thirds. Now if we take C major as our example and we build triads from C, we get the following. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and then back to C major again. So no big surprises there. Now quartal harmony, as the name implies, is where we're building chords by stacking in intervals of fourths instead of thirds. Now again, in the case of C, if we start with the first here, we leapfrog to the fourth degree, and then we leapfrog all the way to the seventh degree. and that would be our first quartal voicing in the key of C major. Now if we build out our chords from there diatonically using the C major scale, we get the following. Just like with our seventh chords in traditional harmony, we can also extend these quartal voicings. So here's that same scale, but this time over four strings. You can hear it's got this ambiguous, slightly floaty sound that's often associated with modal harmony. And that's because it doesn't have the same sense of resolution that we get with traditional functional harmony. And one of the most famous examples of quartal harmony used in real music is the track So What by Miles Davis from his 1959 album Kind of Blue. The signature chords played in between the melody is where we've got quartal harmony. Now the chord played by pianist Bill Evans is a stack of fourths with a major third on the top. Now although it's not strictly a quartal voicing all the way through, the interesting thing about this particular chord is if we take the top note and drop it down to the bottom string, so we're going down two octaves, what we actually end up with is a stack of perfect fourths, like so. Now this track is mostly in D Dorian. This means that its tonal center is D, but we're using the same pool of notes as its parent, C major. Now as you'll see in the next example, this lends itself particularly well to funk, especially when we start using partial three note chords. Now let me take you through some of the shapes that I was using in the last example. Now starting in second position on strings two, three, and four, we get the following. And on 
on strings one, two and three, it's like this. Now whenever you're getting these shapes under your fingers, it's really good to add some sort of musical context. So I'd suggest playing up and down through these chords, over the backing track, or even over your own loop. If you're enjoying this video then please consider a like and subscribe. I will genuinely appreciate it. Now I should point out because of the modal backdrop to the way we're thinking about all of these chords, unlike standard functional harmony, for example when we go to the five chord we get this really strong sense that we want to resolve back to the one chord. With modal harmony and in this case the D Dorian chords that we've been playing through, they've all got equal weighting or equal gravity so they don't feel like they need to resolve anywhere. Now what this means is, is that you can play any of these chords in any particular order over any part of the backing track and they will all sound really good. Now where we can start to explore these shapes a little further is by using inversions. Now if we take one of the first shapes that we looked at, that's 5-5-6 five, five, on the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings, but we're going to take the bottom note, the G there, and flip it up the octave, we'll end up with this shape, a nice suspended sound. Now if we take this to its natural conclusion, in the context of D Dorian, and I'm going to play an open D string just so you can hear it, we'll end up with the following shapes. can sound quite angular and outside mainly because we've got a lot of minor second intervals and major second intervals across those top two strings. Now because they sound a little bit more outside they lend themselves quite well to fusion. So I'm going to play those same chord shapes over the backing track just to put it in some kind of musical context. This is really just the start of where you could go in terms of exploring the sound of quartal harmony. We've only really looked at this in the context of D Dorian, but you could change the tonal center and end up with a different sound just using the same chords. So for example, if you put F as our root note and that's our tonal center, we'd end up with more of an ethereal Lydian sound.
So I'm going to play you out with a short improvisation where we've changed the tonal center to F just so you can hear what this sounds like. 